In this tutorial, we're going to take a look back now at our character. Uh, we have done roughs of the three-quarter front, and hopefully we've all done that three-quarter back rough as well, uh, all for reference to be able to do your storyboard. Same as we had been working on your environments and uh, you know, working on the creative content of it and structure and everything, now we want to come back and uh, really start nailing down uh, our character and cleaning it up because uh, we want to do a proper rotation, particularly the three-quarter front, three-quarter back, and we want to do a size comparison with the Hawk character. So I just want to go through that cleanup process again with everybody. We did it last uh, semester, but I want to make sure we're uh, approaching things the same way. So here I've got my light table set up. I have my rough. Now I want to go over this and uh, do a very light blue and really tweak everything, make sure everything's exactly the way I want it. And then I'm going to go through that cleanup process again so that we're doing a really clean line. Because when we clean this up, this is what we're going to be importing into 3ds Max and uh, start building our character from. Okay. So, uh, again, I like keeping it free here so that I can, and again, I'm just doing light. And I want to make sure that this blue line is exactly the way I want it. So I want to put a lot more care into it than I did on my rough. And I really want to work out structure and uh, understanding of uh, each component of the character. You know, now's the opportunity to uh, really sort out, simplify where necessary, and really think of structure of what how your character is built okay so again my character is very squat very roundish so I like rotating it so that I'm getting a nice rounded shape when I do the body parts here Got off kilter here we got the basic body shape. I want to make sure I'm getting that three-quarter view. I am going to really carefully do the head at this point. Again, kind of rounded, footballish sort of shape. So I just want to make sure I'm getting those angles the way I like. Uh, the glasses here, I want to make sure they look like they have some structure to it, some depth to them. So kind of freehanding a... Uh, almost circle here but I want to show there's some depth dimension because it's an older character he's got these glasses so I'm making them really thick but I'm also trying to keep in mind that I've got to build I got to construct this so I want to use nice clean lines nice simple uh, structure and design concept here so that it'll be easy to build and fits in with that uh, hot character which you'll find very much the same we're going to start building him this week so having a good idea how all this goes together will help in the construction the same with this giving some thought of you know final structure uh, structure so that how are we going to build this character so here i'm doing the pockets so you know i'm trying to you know, like on this little bit here i'm trying to stick it out a little bit i want it to look dimensional even this i kind of gave this so it's like maybe an extra flap on the pocket but i'm just doing that with the line i'm not going to get into super detail because you got to remember all the detail you put on here you'll have to use the line tool to create that extra detail like the probably the biggest thing here for me is going to be this uh, belt holding up the pants and those pants hiked right up to under his chin and when I build that you know I'll have to build uh, you know I'll have to figure out underneath how far that goes so if he's moving his head around it doesn't end at that point that you know this goes further through and figure out where these pieces are but you can do that in the breakdown but for this cleanup we just want to sort out the actual shape and such. So I'm giving a little bend to the legs, maybe a little bit more than what I had, just to make the character have some weight. 
and it's not just straight up and down peg legs happening. But again, I just want to go through, and again, I, I the reason why we have the light go over very lightly with blue is so that we can go over with pencil and do a real nice cleanup and not a bad tracing. So if I turn on the light and use the pencil and dove right in, uh, that cleanup would look really terrible. Uh, it would look all wire bendy. It wouldn't look like a cleanup. It would look like a real bad tracing, which I don't want to do, especially on my own design. And, you know, that goes with any kind of artwork. So I'm going to change the hand on this one. That one's kind of awkwardly folded over on itself. So I'm just going to make that distinct thumb. And uh, we're seeing the palm on this side. So, uh, you know, we did that little lesson on hands. And I expanded on that in the uh, Zoom meaning that we had so that we can get some decent structure happening with that and let me see i'm going to get this arm coming down that elbow and again so i'm gonna tweak and get this one make sure that i've got a good idea of the finger so I'm modifying it a little bit from what's underneath so I'm just tweaking it all just to get as best a look as I can so there we go so I'll cut that off and this might even be a little darker than what I was really after so I mean we can do a little bit of erasing just so when we go over with the lead pencil it's nice and clean get rid of those little blue lines that I was drawing underneath but I just want to be aware of those so when I go to uh, build this character in the pieces and such you know we should be doing a breakdown uh, of all the individual pieces and see how we're going to build it but right now I just want to go over and talk about cleanup again so what I like to do is keep that clean piece of paper over top keep your palm out of it and you know, really work on your line so i want you to practice nice cleanup okay. so just like what we did last semester uh, i did this with the 2d drawing and i think i had my uh, sea captain guy that i did a cleanup on then later on uh, with the vehicle i think i did a cleanup on my train or even my even the boat for the sea captain I did a clean up so I just want to keep reinforcing that you know, we can't just work rough all the time we finally have to commit and get that nice clean line so hopefully you've got a, a good 2b pencil and then you know, decide on a you know, how much you're sharpening and how thick of a line you want on your character. You'll be able to get some idea of that <laughs> when you're cleaning this up. Uh, you know, I, I would recommend that you take a look at the uh, hot character. I've kind of done a previous uh, cleanup, so I've got the hot character here cleaned up as well. Uh, all based on the the lineup and rotation that I gave you previously, but I kind of played with the the line and clean up on that based on that line work I already gave you. Okay. And I'm trying to keep some nice simple shapes. Here's an eyebrow kind of lifted off the head. Like on the shirt in the back here, I'm actually going to add this little uh, line, kind of a seam of the shirt coming up and around his back. So it's those details you can decide, you know, do I want those? Do I need those? Do I, you know, does it help in any way? But it helps give that three quarter dimension, uh, which I've continued down here. And this kind of the fly of the pants because they're hiked up so much that, that it's pretty predominant there. So, uh, okay, I'm out. so here, I'm going to work on this glasses, getting that kind of round. Get 
happening. So it's taking your time. Cleanup is always something that you should leave at a time of day and on your schedule and whatnot where you can relax. You don't want to be hyper or rushed or distracted. You know, whenever is a good time of day to tackle this where it is quiet. I know we all have different situations where we're living, staying, and uh, and hopefully we have some studio space uh, to actually work as quietly as we can and uh, be able to focus on our artwork. But yeah, as I'm doing this, I'm just trying to give you an indication of you know, how fast or slow to work. Don't rush anything. And again, I'm trying to make sure that I'm doing a good cleanup. So, you know, if I'm working on this part of the face, the gel, I'm keeping that in mind. And I want to make sure that the line work is uh, really representative of what it is that I'm drawing here. So here, these are like little age spots on the side of the head. Again, these are, I've, I've chosen a very old character, so I'm trying to draw the characteristics of that. Here, I'm going to draw the top of the pants and the belt loops here and that belt going through, holding those pants up. So these are all pieces that will have to be built and worked on uh, in the final uh, when we're building and rigging this character. So I definitely got a wrist, palm of the hand, the fingers coming out. Again, trying to keep that arc we're talking about with hands, all the things we talked about, really simplifying, but I want to make sure that I'm using that knowledge to do uh, a very good representative of the hand. So let me see. Again, even though there's one big solid line here, I like breaking it up and trying to get that to go exactly where I want. It'd be pretty tricky uh, to try and do it in one go, so I, I like breaking it down into segments and drawing it so I've got complete control of it. So then I, you know, I've got that nice rounded shape coming around. And here's that line that I was talking about here, that three-quarter line. I'm going to bring that. didn't quite follow my blue. I kind of like this a little better. But this is really, ideally, it's sorting that all out beforehand in the blue, making sure it's right. And then you're just concentrating on the quality of the line and a good cleanup when you come to the lead pencil. Because, again, when I'm looking at this, I'm, I'm trying to think, okay, um... How am I going to use that line tool? How am I going to make all these parts? How am I going to build this character in 3ds Max using that line tool? <clears throat> and where my joints are and things. I can go over this later and kind of draw through and show where the seamless joints are. Figure out where the little circles are for where the joints are going to be. But right now I just want a nice clean, as clean a drawing as I can do. It represents the character and then later on we're going to get into digital color we'll start using your tablet we'll get into Photoshop and we'll set up uh, these images so that we can block in some simple color we're not going to get fancy so it's just an intro to digital color but we do want to figure out our colors and such uh, that really work with the character design We'll get in that later on in design here. We'll start looking when this is all set up and we're ready to go to start coloring. We'll start looking at, well, what colors? 
not only the colors, what's the value of the color? How do they contrast with each other? Or how are they complementary of each other? And how does it tell us something about the character? All that's important. So we'll start tackling all that once we have a really good design. A nice cleanup design. So here, almost done on this one. Again, just really take care on your line. Make every line count. Make it nice, smooth. Make sure all the lines are there for a purpose. We don't want to have little scribble lines or anything because, you know, we have to reproduce all these. And the character is going to be moving, so that'll bring the character alive. We don't have to over detail things. I want to make sure this is telling us something about the character. Okay? So, I am now, now that i got one cleaned up, I want to do a, uh, a three-quarter back view, and I might start from scratch on that one as opposed to the rough that I got, because with the cleanup and everything, I might have tweaked things like I did with this hand. So I want to redo that. So I'll go over uh, doing the three-quarter back view again, and uh, we'll get that one prepped and ready for tracing as well. So we'll need to work out this back view again, and we'll probably go through a couple of phases here. One rough, and then uh, you know going over and cleaning that up. So again, how many uh, ways you have to. So I'm going to use tracing paper. Again, you can use the light and a, another piece of paper. Again, I can turn that on, but I have this tracing paper, so I'm going to use it. So I'm going to use the, the same method did before when uh, going to try a back view is for volume and such I'm going to trace over the silhouette so that we can take a look at positioning sizing everything with it with the character so here I'm just gonna bring yeah, well, I bring those out yeah I'll put I'll rough them in for now and then see how I'm gonna work all this I think I gotta change some of this around which we'll go over but this is just a, a, a good start to be able to base a three-quarter back view on so there we go hang on so I've got to guess where the back of this character is going and if this comes up it'd be coming out here somewhere for that belt so here we go so I kind of got that and I'm leaving the head out for now let me put it in because I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna change that because I think the silhouette on this isn't too interesting uh, to work out. So these are decisions we got to make that are going to be creative uh, to sort this out. Okay. So one of the things I'm going to do uh, the, you know, from the angle from this view, uh, I want to start working on what the back would look like. So I'm gonna. Bring, bring this down a bit and then figure out that I've got this belt it's going to come around and I'll figure out that again yeah I want to have a three quarter I got that seam on the shirt coming around and I have that seam I established on the pants too so there's all that kind of three quarter you know, think of that ellipse going all the way through and then finding where that three-quarter line might come in. Uh, pockets. Again, I want them to look like they're following the line of the uh, spherical shape of the character and the pants there. So I'm trying to work out what that pocket would look like coming around. And yeah, I've kind of got the legs. Here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to shift this leg over a bit from what I had and then try and work out how that foot would look from a three quarter back view. Because here's that slipper part coming around like that. Again, I'm working rough, but uh, basing it on that. Uh, three-quarter front silhouette, I can 
hopefully get kind of close to what the three-quarter back would look like and being as accurate as possible. Okay, so this one again is going to be going to figure out where is this slipper going. Well, again, I want to change the direction so he's looking solid on the ground. Now I'm doing it from my uh, generic pose angle uh, that I was doing my design on. But at this stage, you could actually be doing it uh, based on, you know, what your performance is from your storyboard. Since you've gone that far, uh, you can work that out and uh, use, you know, base the pose that's going to be realistic to your character uh, that you're going to be using. So again, it's just uh, being efficient and uh, utilizing. everything and not wasting any time or effort you know because it's all going to be on the film and you know what, what really concentrating on what's going to end up on screen as opposed to drawing some designs that nobody's going to see we're getting to that stage that you've been plotting out and you know uh what it is you want your character to uh, be posing and doing and what the action's going to be so you can start to work that into the design at this stage uh, yeah, I was talking about here, because I know I have a three-quarter back view. I've used it in my storyboard, uh, and so I want to make the character more recognizable from three-quarter back, so I'm having a bit of a profile of his head here. Then. And then, uh, let's see, put a little bit of the ear in here, a little bit of uh, age spot there, and then thinking about those thick glasses coming out. And he's got this elongated nose. And again, I can be checking against a uh, scale here. So he's got this longer nose that comes out. I can get that going there. There we go. So with the uh, hands that are happening here, uh, they're going to switch around. And what I want to make sure is if it's in the back, it's got to line up to this arm here. So I want to make sure when I draw this, it's uh, coming in the right direction. And then have that hands going to be uh, not a the palm, it will be seen the back of the hand. So I can switch this out a little bit. So now when I draw this, I'm thinking of those fingers as being the joint side where we see the knuckles and things. So there we go. So just the opposite of what I've got here, but keeping the idea of that working. So yeah so i want to get that this one being in the foreground that's going to be larger and a little lower this one might be up a little bit that position isn't too bad but i can there we go work that out so this one i'm going to be seeing in the palm so i want to make sure it makes sense and is working So here I'll have to really work out, get all of this happening properly. So this is going to be a rough one. Now I've got to go over and do a clean uh, blue and do that on the paper so I can do a clean up like this one and that these will match back to back and get that working. Okay. So I've already cleaned this one up. I'm not going to go through the whole process of cleaning this one up again. But uh, just going, wanted to go through that process of doing that three-quarter view that works. Because we do want to make sure from one view to the next, the character's on model. It looks like the same character. So we just got to tweak everything to make sure that it's bang on and works and makes sense. Okay, so it's that process. So the end result of all this, of where we're going, what I need you to be handing in and getting set up is 
and I'll just show you the end result here. Uh, that is, let me zoom out. Here we go. I, I want all the views that you're using in your film. And my recommendation was a three quarter front, three quarter back and keeping it simple and not doing side views and straight on front views. But if our, you're using them, you've got to clean them up and put them in your rotation. Okay. So uh, I just have simple lines here just to line these up. You can see this clean up. I changed things. I got rid of this arm back here and I bent this one because I looked at my storyboard and this is the three quarter back view that I need. He never has his arm straight here. So it's always bent. So I'm making this useful to me so that I can uh, work with this. You'll see in the next video that uh, carefully going through the storyboard and doing what changes you need because in mine my three-quarter front view i've got a lot of different hand positions arm positions and holding objects he's got that old-fashioned camera bellows and uh, the lighting system so that's all things that have to be added these are extra arms and hand shapes and things that i have to sort out so i can build them and then it'll all fit into this cleanup because this is what we're going to construct uh, everything from so the uh Hot character, you can just, you know, find that three-quarter view uh, in that lineup that I gave you, and you can cut and paste, but give me an indication of what the size difference is between the characters. So now, when we uh, start constructing and having these characters in the same scene, we can maintain that size relationship and working them out, okay? And even then, uh, you'll have to look at this character. Uh, I've given you some different hand positions and different angles of feet and uh, different perspective and such of this character. You have to modify him and do the additional bits and whatever, how you're going to construct this character. It's going to be what you need him to do in your film. So, you know, if you don't have a hand in this position, well, you know, let's do the hand uh, in the position you need or one of them and uh, find out what the other ones are going to look like and, and work on those as well. But for right now, uh, I just want you to really commit to the character, do a good cleanup, uh, particularly the three quarter front, three quarter back that you'd be using in your film and uh, size comparison and prepping all this because what we'll be doing later is uh, scanning these, setting them up, and do digital color because we want to take a look at the color of your character uh, in that lineup. I'm not sure. I think the one was in color. I'll make sure I give you the color one so you can see what the colors are on the hot character and that we can uh, keep this consistent in everybody's film, but that your character will be having contrasting colors and such to really tell something about your character. Okay, so... Hopefully this is clear where we're going. It's the next step. Again, back to character. We will go back and be going through this sort of cleanup and everything with your environments too. But uh, we need more time for construction and such for the characters, so we're tackling them first. The next thing we'll be doing uh, is on your character is doing a mouth chart, figuring out you know to lip sync for your character. You're gonna have to do uh, mouth shapes and everything that work. Uh, to do lip sync and any expression so that we can look at expressions and see what we have to do uh, up on your character to get them really uh, functional and really getting their personality out and really make them come alive. Okay? All right. See you in the next tutorial.